In terms of that timeline, that potential crude uh, flights for both SpaceX and Boeing could slip into early next year, how confident are you with that new timeline? So we have to remember this is development. Uh, we are not in an operations phase, we're in a development phase. So between now and that date, uh, we've got a number of tests for both commercial crew providers uh, that have to be successful. And so what we learn in those tests will determine the timeline. But we are, we are confident that if everything goes according to plan, we will be launching American astronauts on American rockets from American soil for the first time since 2011 uh, at the first, in the first part of next year. So we're looking at the first quarter of next year if everything goes according to plan. Now, we mentioned the fact that you were at SpaceX's headquarters last week. You were meeting with Elon Musk there. A lot of attention ahead of that meeting, given the fact that via Twitter you had basically come out and taken the kind of unusual step of singling out the company for falling behind uh, in terms of this commercial crew timeline. How are you thinking about it now that you had that meeting last week, and how does it speak to your broader take on contractors for programs across NASA? So as, as the NASA administrator, I have a fiduciary responsibility to the American taxpayer. And so we are focused on making sure that our contractors do everything in their power to maintain cost and schedule. Uh, in this particular case, we are going to the International Space Station commercially. What that means is instead of NASA purchasing, owning, and operating the hardware, we're going to buy a service from commercial providers. The two commercial providers in this case are SpaceX and Boeing. And we are holding both accountable uh, to, to meeting the, the goals that they but have how? established. But how so, are you holding them accountable? So we are making sure, remember, we are, we are doing milestone payments based on performance. And so in order to achieve those milestone payments, they need to perform according to, to our schedules. Uh, so that's one way. Um, and then, of course, the big thing is um, just making sure that, that these, these are what we call fixed price contracts. In other words, uh, NASA says, here's what we're going to pay and, and here's what you're going to do for that price. Uh, as a fixed price contract, we don't get to plus up every time they need support for various things. So what we're doing is we're encouraging them uh, to make sure that they are placing the right resources in the right places. And of course, my recent meeting with Elon Musk, uh, we encouraged them to focus on the Mark III parachute system uh, for the Crew Dragon, as well as some changes to the launch abort system and the testing thereof. Uh, and, and so we are working with them hand in hand to make sure that as, at the earliest possible date, we can launch American astronauts from American soil again. Is your contract structure working perfectly, or are there things that you've learned through this that are going to influence you to change the next time you do this? So I think we have learned a lot already in a very positive way. Um, again, our goal is to be one customer of many customers in a very robust commercial marketplace in low Earth orbit. But we don't just want to be one customer of many customers. We also want to have numerous providers that are competing against each other on cost and innovation. So that's what we have done with the commercial crew program, which will launch our American astronauts in the first part of next year. Uh, but what we have to make sure we do in the future is, is take the lessons learned from this and replicate what worked and don't make the mistakes of, of things that didn't work. Um, one of the things that is of concern is when you have a firm fixed price contract, uh, sometimes the, the schedule slips because the, the, the contractors themselves are more interested in maintaining their bottom line, but schedules matter here, and, and we want to make sure that we're committed to schedule as well. But remember, the goal here, this is a, this is a development program to where NASA can eventually yeah. become a customer and have numerous providers competing on cost and innovation. Space Angels last week came out with its quarterly venture capital investing report, and what they found is that in the third quarter, $24.6 billion in equity investment went into more than 500 space companies. Through the first nine months of this year, that brings uh, total funding up to $5 billion, which is almost a 50 percent increase over 2018. So it certainly seems like the investment community is starting to increase capital to the space sector. I wonder how closely you're watching that and what it oh, means yeah. in terms of potential future public-private partnerships with some of these startups. Absolutely. We're watching it very closely. We're not just watching it. We are helping it mature. We want commercial industry to be successful. A lot of people watching this right now might be watching on DirecTV or Dish Network. Maybe they're going to see it on the Internet, Internet broadband from space, and, of course, XM radio and all these other kind of commu uh, communication capabilities 
in space. These are all kind of capabilities that were born from this little agency called NASA um, starting decades ago. Uh, but it's not just about communication, it's about navigation with GPS, technology developed by NASA, how we produce food, how we produce energy, um, how we provide national security and defense, do disaster relief, predict weather, understand climate. All of these things are born from this little agency we call NASA. And what we have to do is make sure that we are putting the United States of America in a preeminent position for the space economy of the future. That's what we want to do. When we talk about the balance of payments for the United States of America and the trade deficit, there are two bright, shiny objects for the United States. One is space, and another is aeronautics. And these are two areas that NASA leads in, and we want to make sure that we're placing the right investments in the right places so that these commercial markets can continue to foster and maintain an export capability for the United States.